Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. I'm going to talk to you about the opportunity that we have now uh, to create a national synthetic environment or a national digital twin. Uh, these terms are used synonymously to describe our ability to make uh, replications of how an entire country or an entire alliance works at vast scale and, and vast complexity. And I'm going to talk about how we make those and what they are going to be used for. And let me begin by saying this is a transformational opportunity for every country. This is what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to make you a proposition about what a national synthetic environment is and uh, how it's going to be vital in today's more challenging world. I'll talk a little bit about those challenges because the context in which uh, we need these tools is changing. I'll then talk about the technologies that make a national synthetic environment possible. I'll then describe to you what a national synthetic environment is uh, in some detail. I'm then going to talk about the opportunity this gives to governments and armed forces and indeed uh, many others. And finally, I'll talk a little bit about how we get to the point where we can exploit this technology using CAE as a core prime integrator. So this is the, the proposition. Um, we recognize that we live in a far more challenging world. The post-Cold War era is over, uh, and every nation is beginning to recognize they're going to have to handle a very different range of risk and challenge uh, in the years ahead. To manage that, <clears throat> we're going to need new capability, new tools, in order to be safe and secure and uh, competitive. Fortunately, combinations of digital age technology will allow us to make these new tools and will give us not just an accessorization of the way that we work now, but crucially, transformational opportunities to be better and indeed cheaper. So, a digital twin or a national synthetic environment, I'm going to describe to you, uh, will become a foundational enabler for the way that governments and militaries uh, operate and succeed. And this will run across the full spectrum of how we understand this challenging world, how we make decisions, how we plan, how we direct activity, how we coordinate the activity once it's underway, and indeed how we experiment as we must and train at an individual and a collective level. And one of the key points to register at the start is that some of the efficiencies we can now make in the way particularly armed forces and governments train will be so significant that they will more than pay for the costs of building a national synthetic environment that does so much more than training. And the fact is, this technology exists now. CAE can build a national synthetic environment for a government today, drawing in a whole range of partners. So this is an opportunity that we can seize today. I said I would talk a little bit more about the emerging strategic uh, context because we all have to recognize that many of us have experience and ways of working that have been developed throughout the post-Cold War era, the period from about 1989 up until around about 2010. But now we recognize we live in a very different world where the challenges are going to be dominated by the combination of three big factors, the rise of Asia, particularly China, the effect of population growth and climate change as mankind reaches the limits of our planet's ability to manage our needs and expectations and demands. And thirdly, the effect of the digital age, this fourth industrial revolution, which is changing so much about how we live and work and play. And then, of course, there are other problems that we need to address in the West, the challenge of Russia, the challenge of Iran, and of violent extremism around the world. So this combination of challenge that we all need to address is different from many of the things we've dealt with in recent years because it's genuinely existential. So we need tools that can manage existential peril, risks to our homeland, our security, our values, our interests abroad, and our prosperity. And let me focus on a minute particularly on the use of a national synthetic environment, a replication of a homeland or indeed a, an alliance. So there are three things that we know we have to do better. We have to make better policy about how we manage the challenges of modern society. 
We know we have to manage our national security in the face of a whole range of threats, whether that's military hard power or indeed grey space confrontation or indeed natural or man-made uh, disaster. So a national synthetic environment is going to help us maintain not just our policy making but also our national security and our national resilience. The technologies that underpin a national synthetic environment uh, span almost all the digital age capabilities that uh, are being advanced across uh, many industries and aspects of, of society. So we recognize that there is tremendous virtue in single technologies like the power of data in the cloud, of artificial intelligence, of robotics, of powerful networks, space-based capability, the use of autonomy. But the fact is, uh, CAE can combine these with partners to build these very much more complex and sophisticated capabilities. So a national synthetic environment is essentially seizing on a combination of all of the most powerful uh, digital age technologies. So what is a national synthetic uh, environment? Well, it is a replication and integration of all the relevant elements of the operating environment at vast scale and complexity that constitutes how a country actually lives and operates. It's important to see these, uh, it's important to see a national synthetic environment as a digital ecosystem. It essentially accesses, it integrates a wide range of data, models and applications and integrates them onto a single platform. The point about this ecosystem is it's never really finished. It will always change with circumstances, with technology and the user's uh, needs. So this isn't like an iPhone that comes in a box. This is about building an ecosystem that changes with time and demand. And the important thing is the technology is now good enough to integrate layers of data and applications and models that previously would only have existed in a single stove, stovepipe. And in particular, and I'm going to talk about this in more detail, a national synthetic environment integrates the physical with the human, with the cognitive, with the resources that constitute how a country operates. And we need to recognize this isn't a closed system. This is built on open standards and accesses existing models, data sources, and applications in this ecosystem. So this will, in many ways, be a near real-time replication of how your country or your alliance operates. Let's look in a little more detail at uh, each of the four main layers and I'm going to start with the physical layer. In many ways uh, this is the most uh, uh, um, compelling to the human eye because it's about uh, looking at the terrain including the complex models of built terrain and all forms of in infrastructure. But all of this data generally exists quite readily and is simply drawn into this uh, ecosystem. So we're talking about taking the terrain database of your choice, of drawing in models of complex urban infrastructure, of drawing in the weather in real time, and then making very interesting choices about uh, the other aspects of the physical world that you want to draw into your own national synthetic environment. So common for a country would be power distribution, water, telecoms, gas, road, rail, uh, airports, perhaps even supermarket distribution systems, and clearly uh, transport networks. So uh, you can make a choice about what aspects of the physical world you want to draw into it, and indeed you can draw in as many as you like and then choose the ones that you uh, elect to use. So this physical layer provides the essential underpinning um, for the other aspects of, a, of your national synthetic environment. So the next layer we're going to talk about is the human layer. And in many ways, this is amongst the most important because it, is, it, it represents technology that we've never been able to integrate in the same way before. So your national synthetic environment can take your country down to individual households uh, if you choose to. Uh, if you're a government, you may elect to use uh, mobile phone networks to show where every individual phone is at a given time. That's clearly not open to every uh, user. So this means that your national synthetic environment can show uh, where your population is. It will also show where your population is, is moving to. 
either by replicating an established pattern of life or uh, if the right information exists, showing where people are actually in uh, real time. And then you can add to that aspects of the world that are really important, such as your uh, pandemic models in the case of something like uh, COVID-19 or indeed any other future uh, epidemic. And you can model in this human layer those things that are important to policymaking or security or resilience, such as demography, uh, welfare pictures, income, um, other aspects of, of your civil society. So this human layer sits on top of the physical layer and shows where the population is, where they're moving to, and other key aspects of your um, population. And then there is the cognitive layer. So not only is it important to be able to understand where people are and where they're moving to, we also want to know uh, what, what's troubling them, what sentiment is, what's trending. And so by accessing all forms of social media, it is possible to draw into your natural synthetic environment a sense of sentiment linked to geography. So that means it's possible not just to know where people are and what they're thinking, but also to register over time how influences have had an effect. So a government might be able to judge and calibrate the effect of a particular intervention by measuring what people do and also what they talk about. And that will clearly affect decisions that are made about the resource layer in a national synthetic environment. And here there are some uh, obvious choices. So in the model of a country, you would clearly want to replicate aspects of your emergency services, uh, perhaps um, your uh, police and, and fire and ambulance, maybe your uh, armed forces in some circumstances, and then other choices about those resources that are important to how a country ticks, such as uh, food distribution or uh, energy distribution. And if we're able to build uh, a national synthetic environment that consists of a physical, human, cognitive and resource layer, then we need to think very clearly about the potential uses of such a complex digital ecosystem. For many people, when they've started down this road, what they have wanted is a tool that supports how they understand what's going on in order to take better decisions. And at the other end of the spectrum, there are those that see this sort of capability as key to the way that they train. And both of these things are true. So in building a national synthetic environment, it's really important to understand that it supports this spectrum of activity, which spans from understanding your world better, deciding faster, more accurately, and more decisively, helping you to plan better, to then communicate and direct those plans across government and to all layers of authority. And this is a really important point. Part of the magic of a national synthetic environment is that it provides this capability, uh, as it were, in a box at one point in government. But 50% of its power in, is how that magic is distributed horizontally across a government, say at national level, and then down to all levels of authority, and in some cases, out to allies and partners. Uh, if we're able to do that, then we can coordinate uh, activity as it happens in real time. Every layer of authority is looking at what is going on at the same time and in the same way. And if we can do all of those things, then clearly we can experiment. We can try out different capabilities, different ways of working, using artificial intelligence to support the testing of various options or courses of action. And if we do all of that, then clearly we're going to use it to educate and train, both at the individual level and collectively, whether that's for the armed forces or for groups of officials, indeed officials and industry. So a national synthetic environment or a digital twin genuinely enables all aspects of government in a transformational way. And this is a really important point. In using a national synthetic environment, of course we're going to start gently. We're going to use it to augment or accessorize how we work now. But as we use it, it will lead us to decisions about how we can organize differently and operate differently. This is as transformational an aspect of digital age capability as data or AI or connectivity or robotics or autonomy are in their own way. And now let's talk about uh, this 50% of the advantage, which is the distribution of a national synthetic environment uh, horizontally and vertically. And in this slide you can see that uh, you, you could use it across 
the top level of government leadership, so across all the departments at national level and across to task forces and key agencies like armed forces and national uh, police. Uh, you can then uh, distribute it down to a level of uh, regional government or uh, across to allies and, and partners and from there down to state or provincial authorities and down to municipalities. So we need to think of a world where every layer of government is connected to the same national synthetic environment and able to use it for all the purposes we've described, to understand, to decide, to plan, to direct, to coordinate, to train and experiment. So as we've begun to explore the potential use cases of a national synthetic environment, it's become clear there are three primary categories. The one I've talked about mostly so far, which is how you use a replication of your country or your alliance to make better policy, to support your re resilience and your security. Uh, secondly, of course this is going to be useful to military forces, um, whether this is uh, preserving homeland defense and security or cooperating in an alliance such as uh, NATO. And thirdly, uh, given that we live in a conflicted and competitive world, countries will build national synthetic environments uh, of their competitors or their opponents, uh, not in any uh, aggressive way, but in order to understand them better and to be able to calibrate how they influence their partners and competitors in a, in a difficult world. This will help the way that we, we understand, so the business of intelligence, and the way they influence and cooperate with our partners and competitors around the world. So these three use cases are connected by common technology, and of course they'll make a contribution not just to a national view, but to an alliance or coalition view of a particular problem or challenge. But we need to get there. Uh, this technology exists today, it's been experimented with and it's proven. Uh, but of course it is a fairly complex uh, challenge to get from where we are today to where we would like to be, which is a fully established national synthetic environment distributed across all levels and layers of government. So what CAE can do is lead the integration of the building of national synthetic environments, drawing together cloud provision, which is essential to all outcomes, the networks that connect users to the cloud, the operating platform that will connect models and data and applications and equipment to the cloud, and the, the delivery of the managed service uh, that will establish for a user a really coherent and comprehensive capability. And that, of course, isn't all going to happen overnight. So CAE will take a partner from an initial capability and build it out to a full program and then sustain it uh, for years to come. To do this, most users now need to understand what it is that their program would look like. So CAE will initially support the experimentation with national synthetic environment technology to help users, such as a nation, identify what it wants and how to get there over time. So to conclude, CAE can build for you a national synthetic environment that will take the physical, human, cognitive and resource layers of how a country or an alliance operates and integrate them. And in building that, CAE will offer a government or armed forces or an agency a genuinely transformative enabler to how they work and in future how they organize and operate. And we can do this now. Thank you very much.